Hello to all my classes. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> this is my good friend Tiamat here, and uh, we are in Frankfurt, uh, Germany. And um, I'm giving you guys a chance to look at a few of my unprofessional interviewing uh, 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 sessions that I've been doing with my friends, uh, people I've been staying with. So I, I'm going to be having the one here with uh, from Denmark, and then here with Tiamat. Now Tiamat, I met in California and she grew up in California and so we were just kind of discussing life in Germany compared to the United States and also some of the political systems. So um, how long did you live in California, Tiamat? Um, about 12 years, so from when I was 6 until I was 18. Then I moved directly to Frankfurt and I've been there since, so I've been here for about 7 years. About 7 years? Yeah. And, um, and so uh, so here, so what were you shocked about when you came to Germany compared to growing up in, in the United States and California? Was there any kind of like like big surprise in terms of the way life was running here? Like everyday, everyday kind of things or? Yeah. Are you yeah. Talking? Okay. Um, well, I think we talked about it earlier also, just speaking with my friends in California, if you hang out. And I mean, this was in high school, but even then at like 17, 18, just the conversations that you would have were very different from when I came to here. So when, just to, as an example, when you came, when I came to Germany, you know, you'd go out and get some drinks with people and you're like still like 18 years old and then you'd be drinking and everything, but you'd be talking about politics and like things about the world and like not just within, within Germany, but just politics from all over and what's happening and current issues and stuff like that. And for me, like, I'm, I'm sure people in America did the same thing, but for me, at least in my friend circle, that was a bigger shock because you kind of just talk about like, what's going on in your in your community and in your lives there. Like people that you have crushes on or parties exactly. or, or something <laughs> like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> so cute <laughs> yesterday, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and so, you, you so, so, so you're saying, that you, so you think that the, that the average European teenager cares more about politics than an average American, like that, that that's a normal thing? So you're drinking I beer, it's legal to drink beer at 18 with your friends? Yeah, I okay. think the legal drinking age is like 15 or 16. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, what was your question before that? Oh yeah. Um, so so you think that, that that it's fair to say that the average European teenager does actually care about politics? Like, I mean, this, right. we're not we're having this is not a scientific study. We're, we're no. trying to go, but like that's your impression. Like I just observed that, and I think it's also just um, in the school system you learn a lot more about just from what I've heard from my German friends. You do learn a lot more about politics and 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 world politics as well, not just German mm -hmm. politics. Um, so I think it's just, I mean, sure they're interested in the, in the idea that we talked about it all the time, but I think it's just, they don't have anything else to compare it to. <laughs> like for them that's normal to, ever since they were young, you, you, they've been surrounded by those sort of discussions. Like you were saying, your friend's child asks you about, you know, Trump and why would you elect Trump and stuff like that. Yes, nine-year-old. Like, yeah, nine-year-old. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, it's, yeah. Like, it's funny for us because we know other examples, but um, in general, to generalize, it's pretty normal in Europe, I think, for kids to just be like, oh, this is what's happening in the world, and be kind of more up-to-date than I am sometimes, which is horrible, but... No, yeah. no, I, 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 no, I feel you. Okay, so listen, so since you men mentioned Trump, I don't really want to make this about a, um, a kind of a bashing... Uh, I, I don't want to, like, spin this in, into a, a particularly political bias thing, but I just want to kind of address this fact that I have noticed... Um, here, I mean, Trump is polarizing in the United States. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's a polarizing character. I mean, pe even people who support him, I think they're aware. <laughs> that it's, it's not an unfair characteristic to say yeah. that he's polarizing. Um, the uh, What do your circle of friends, at least, think about Amer what's happening in America and politics? Like, like you know, in terms of the, the election and just, like, politics in general and and political life in America compared to here in Germany? What, what do you think? Well, um, when Trump got elected, it was, I mean, my friends, of course, have very similar, well, maybe not of course, but they do have very similar views as I do about Trump. Um, and not to get too much into that, because I want to say a little bit objective here, but even when I went to, the next day after he got elected, I woke up, I saw the news, I had to go to the vet with my dog. And even my vet, he was like, you grew up in, a, in California, right? And he was like, how, you know, he had such a passionate, like, strong feeling about this. Like, he was upset, and he's not even, you know, living there. Like, for him, it was just inconceivable 
like he he was really asking like oh why you know do you think that he should be elected and he was really like upset so even just that even like my own veterinarian was talking like everyone was talking to me about it and, and no one was saying I'll just put it like this no one was saying anything positive about it so it was definitely like this kind of questioning of of American politics in that sense but it was I got you now <clears throat> okay so moving away from from that for a little bit um, we have two parties in uh, the United States. Uh, we have the D Democratic Party and the Republican Party. Um, do, you, do you think that politics here, you guys have a different system, right? How many parties do you have, or do you know? Do you know? Do you have I don't more know than how one? many parties we have, but it's definitely more. So that means you have, you, have more, you have so many that you don't know Yeah, I don't know exact. how many we have, but um, there are definitely ones that are like, you know, um, a lot bigger, like the, like, I mean, now everyone's kind of concerned about like the um, AFD, AFD in German, but AFD. Um, and you know there are bigger bigger parties that like just like in America there are bigger parties that everyone is kind of okay let's focus on these ones but um, I'm pretty sure it's it's a lot easier to just like make a party and kind of just be <laughs> in the running and um, I mean yeah and, and I just had another thought to just to jump back quick to the to the Trump thing you even noticed it here like just the way people are acting you did notice it here also like after he got elected um, like before, I was always like, "Oh, there aren't many Nazis here. Everything's fine." And then the week after he was elected, there was like swastikas being graffitied everywhere. Like just as like a, I don't know if that's relevant for this conversation, but it was like as far as like the politics, like you did feel like people outside of America as well who maybe think similarly as Trump are feeling more empowered that they see, "Oh, Trump is so, so, elected." So, and now so, so, let me, so let me just do this, for, uh, and I'll do fairness for a second. I'm going to ask this, and then, we'll, and then we'll move on just a little bit. Many of my um, conservative family members or friends from America would say, well, this is a mischaracterization of, of, of Trump that the left has made. And you're talking about the Nazi signs coming up here. Um, just from what your experience is this, do you feel that the far right here, whether rightly or wrongly, um, I mean, what... what do you feel like that the far right has taken inspiration by this uh, presidency? Is that, the, is that yeah. the general consensus of people here yeah. in Germany? Well, I think it's a mixture of that and also like the refugee situation um, as well. So okay. I think it's kind of like, I mean, this is like always an issue. Racism is always an issue, but I definitely didn't notice it as much. I mean, I definitely, I, yeah, I think I can confidently say I didn't notice it as much before as far as like racism and um as an observer, I didn't notice it as much before. And now you do hear comments on the subway of like, you know, more racist comments than you did before. Like I said, you'll see like graffiti signs and uh, uh, swastika signs like graffiti on the walls and stuff like that. So yeah, you definitely do notice it. Like I feel like, and I, this is a conversation I have with my friends a lot where they say that they have the feeling that before it was kind of like more suppressed because like you hear you can't just like buy a gun and, and kind of, you know, whatever, it's more like suppressed. And I feel like now people are suddenly throughout Europe actually are feeling a little bit more like, oh, my feelings about this and this are valid because maybe Trump is portraying that for them. I see. Now, okay, so you talked about the guns. Can people have guns in Germany? Mm -mm. Well, you'd have to go through, I think you have to take classes on gun, shooting guns. Like you have to, there's like a certification process and then buying it is like a whole nother thing. Like I've never bought a gun, so I can't like tell you like, oh, you have to do this and this. By the but, way, <laughs> but, but it's not considered. There's no, uh, no. Uh, Second Amendment. There's no right to a gun here. No. That, that and that's like the first. That's the first thing that everyone mentions when they they ask, oh, can you really just walk into a, a store and buy a gun in America? And I'm like, well, yeah, I guess. I mean, <laughs> it's I, I it's, it. it's really surprising. People can't fathom that that's that that's a option. Interesting. Okay, so th this, uh, with limited time here, just I want to cover this then. So that, now there's a discussion about democratic socialism. There was Bernie Sanders, and there is a strong, strong anti-socialist um, sentiment and, uh, in, in the United States. The Democrats are the one party that like believes in g government programs, the closest thing to anything socialist. The Republicans are against it. Um, you pay a lot of taxes here, right? Yeah. So, how much taxes do you pay for? So you get a paycheck. What do you say, twenty five percent? Yeah, it's about twenty five percent, and it depends on how much you earn as well. So, if you're earning less, then of course you will be paying less taxes. So, um, I personally pay about twenty five percent, and then the more I would earn, the more that you have to pay. Okay. How do you feel about that? 
That's high tax. Um, like we were saying, I mean, it's sort of like my favorite and least favorite thing about living out living in Europe is at the moment when you're paying it. Of course, you're paying a lot of money, and it's painful to see less money in your bank account just in that moment that you're paying it. Um, but long term, you notice the effects. It's worth it long term. So, for example, like we were saying, um, education. Like you're not going to have uh, student loan debts if you're studying here. Um, you you know, healthcare is like close to absolutely free. I mean, there might be some times where you have to pay like a couple hundred euros here and there. Um, and yeah, you definitely just notice it in in your everyday life. Okay, so you have total healthcare coverage. Is right. there any political party? Like a conservative political party in Germany that would try to abolish having free health care? Is that an agenda? Not that I'm I aware of. I don't think so. I mean, so I've never, I've never heard that as a, as an argument. Do you know Germans? Are anybody saying that that they, they pay too much taxes? They'd rather have, let's say, the American system, an insurance-based system. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> is, that fun, is that a funny question? <laughs> no, no, I haven't, I haven't heard that before. You haven't heard that before? Okay. Um, and you said no college debt. No college debt. No, and um, yeah, we kind of talked about it before as well, but you, you also get money from the government, like let's say if you don't come from a rich family, or if you're, you do but you're not earning much money at the moment, um, you can get roughly 500 euros a month from the government that you don't have to pay back. So this isn't like a loan that you know you get 500 and you have to pay it back after, but you just, you're just you receiving this like for rent, for some food, just to support you getting through uh, college as well. I see. Okay, so now we were talking um, earlier about like some of the downsides of things. Now you are you have your own business right now, right? Yeah. Now you said that there's there is a certain element of difficulty in that. Like, so what what what's some of the more like negative side about some of the political system here? Is it easy to start a business in Germany? Um, no, and that's like, I mean, it's sort of the running joke, I guess, or the cliche about Germany that we have a bunch of rules and everything's like very like punctual and like. Um, and the great thing about America is that you can go and it's fairly fairly easy to start a business. Just I mean, even just me knowing people who have started businesses and are self-employed and, and so on, it's fairly easy to start it. There isn't as much paperwork as there is in, in Germany. Um, and in Germany, yeah, it's like a huge process. And anyone who starts something here is like they're always complaining about how much paperwork there is. But in the end, you actually have way more protection for the things that you're doing, and everything is very like by the book. So in the end, it's kind of protecting everyone in a way it's protecting you in case something goes wrong in your business because you have all these things filled out you have the support that you need if things go wrong you have insurances for different you know aspects of your business um, it protects the people who are benefiting from like you know not just anyone can start a business you have to actually show that you're capable of of running it so people using the um, your services so to speak are also protected and it's just sort of like this this it's a, makes a more solid base for like an economic base and for businesses it's more stable. But like again, in America it's so much easier, but in the end there are also cons to that as well. Okay, interesting. Yeah. So <coughs> um, to wrap this up, <coughs> can you, um, I mean we kind of address some of these things. What are some of the things that you miss about living in the United States right now? Mm, I think kind of like that just sort of carefree energy that just, like I was saying, you can start something and just, um, well, specifically in Germany, like the culture, in California to Germany, as you could imagine, is like extremely different just culturally. So I do miss like some of that sometimes. of just like this, this uh, you can you can sense when you're walking by a cafe, even here, you can hear the American from a mile away, and I just kind of like miss that, just that, <laughs> you know, just sort of like the banter and the talking and just like everyone's your best friend kind of energy, and um, I miss that. I mean, we have it here too, but you have to kind of be in the community first and. Uh, it's a little bit hard. A little bit yeah. harder. That wasn't a political groups. answer now, but that's like the only thing I can. Well, well no, no, that's a cultural uh, thing. So, so you're saying it's a little easier. It's a little harder to break through and hang out in social circles yeah. here. Yeah. You're saying. Yeah, I mean, everyone's out and about and is, is doing things together, but to have that kind of like immediate, like kind of, oh, hey, let's go do something, is very like more American, I think. Got you. Okay. Well, actually. Um, there's so many questions I, I, I wanted to ask. We didn't really go over the refugee crisis or the EU, but actually, maybe just just on this, um, maybe we should, we can end it here on this. Do you think the EU is a good thing or a bad thing? That's that's it's, it. Might not be a simple answer, but what do you, what do you feel? Would you want to see it if you had to make a choice between it going away or keeping it? Mm. What would you say? 
I mean, European. just living within the EU, I don't. I think I would I would I'd agree with it that I think it's a good idea to have that that way. Like even now with like the whole Brexit thing, you can kind of already start seeing the issues of if it's all separate. I think it is better to have it be the EU. I think it's better. Yeah. Um, and uh, do you see a positive? I, I know it's getting a little bit. Uh, um, do you think that Europe's going to be able to kind of resolve the issues that are having that, that are developing with um, the situation with the refugees? And, and of course, the refugees are going through their own struggles as well. I mean, can yeah. everybody get this together here? I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a big, heavy question to kind of end it on. But like, do you have any thoughts about um, on, on where that <laughs> goes forward? Or is that just too much? Is that just too big to really? Well, address? I don't think anyone has the answer to that question anyway. But. Um, I mean, it is difficult because on one hand, like, just I'm the kind of person who is like, you know, at the end of the day, we're all people, you know, like that kind of thing. And of course, like, if people are fleeing their country because they're literally, you know, that, that says something about the place that they're coming from, that they have to risk their lives and risk their children's lives and leave their homes. And I mean, that's not a something you just kind of decide on a whim to just go somewhere like that. Um, so they do need help and they do need, like, support. And um, on the other hand, it, it is like kind of a lot of conflicts are coming out from it. Like, you know, a lot of people saying like, oh, we don't want to support refugees. And that's what I was mentioning earlier. Like you do hear more comments on the subway now of, of people kind of having that resistance. And you hear people talking about refugees in a negative way. Um, I don't know. I think there has to be some kind of, there has to be more of a balance as well, of just kind of like, that's the big question, is like where, like there is at some point like this, the space and the kind of like making sure that they can start working here in like a way that kind of just like flows with the, the economy that we have going right now. All of that is, that's like the main thing that I'm noticing is just like looking for jobs is really difficult if you're just kind of coming to Germany. Just, especially if you're a refugee, like you don't have your birth certificate, probably you don't have all these different paperwork, like just starting. So you have a lot of people living in um, camps and they can't really get out. Like they can't just find because of the bureaucracy. So that's kind of like, I think there has to be some kind of more more ways to help refugees actually kind of just fit into, into where they're now living, whether it's Germany or whether it's Greece or whether it's anywhere else that they're arriving at. Well, thanks for um, these thoughts. And uh, what I'm hoping that uh, all the students um, are getting the impression of is just um, seeing that there's a world outside of the United States and, and, and it getting exposed to some of the different kind of um, feelings that people have on the street. This yeah. happens to be my friend, of course, uh, like I said, this is not a scientific representation of everybody. Um, and, uh, but, but hopefully, again, it's just kind of given you all a, an idea of, of some different perspectives. And so we'll end this right here. Yeah. All right. Bye. Tschüss. <laughs>